it's something I kind of discovered here recently. Why'd you just have to do that? Dunbar, basically. I know some of you are probably questioning why we put diesel in it, but. The flies get back on, so they have a hard time healing right now. Hey guys, Dusty Baker across Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Today, got my buddy Cole out here with me. He's back from Texas. We're hanging out with the yearlings out here. We're gonna give these guys uh, some uh, Redmond Minerals today. We're going to take an old Dunbar feed trough out to the Big Joe herd in their new pasture. Also kind of discovered something new on our property here recently. And so we're gonna show you that today. And then we also have two large things. We're not gonna tell you what it is, but we got two things donated to us from a local company right here out of Davis, Oklahoma, that is going to help us here on the ranch. And um, we'll show you that in just a little bit. By the way, if you ever wanna watch Dunbar and some of the original footage from the original herd, you guys can go back and watch it at our other channel at Cross Timbers Bison Clips. You can see all the old footage of us in the early days. So if you're just now joining us, it may be a good idea for you guys to go back and watch it on our Clips channel at Cross Timbers Bison Clips. Brooks is uh, Black Betty here, the pet. The Murray County Grand Champion? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Gotta get uh, the other mineral trough that I've been using up here, but because there's no more bison up here, they're in the very far back. We've gotta take this trough so we can give them some minerals. We're gonna give some minerals to all the yearlings, and then uh, we're gonna take a trough to the back to uh, the Big Joe herd. Why'd you just have to do that? Dunbar, basically, if you want to get down to it. I made the mistake as a first time raising bison. I bought these troughs. They're, they're a little bit cheaper because this little poly liner and this thin tubing, um, first time as a bison owner, you just learn. And uh, basically, they uh, were destroyed by Dunbar. You can see some puncture holes in here and... Uh, he had basically ripped these out and then the framing became a toy frame and I learned that uh, he basically, he liked to make a lot of noise with his horns and it was something easy for him to throw around. And we had about three of them and he uh, got a hold of about well, all three of them. And uh, this was one of the best ones that survived. Um, the rest, I have the liners, all the liners came out of the frame and the frame became a toy. So. Dunbar and so I turned it into a mineral feeder. There's a couple holes in the bottom of it so water can drain but I like to use them for minerals. So far nobody over here, none of the bison have been flipping them over. Now the one the one with the yearlings that we're about to go see it is heavy duty and they don't mess with it at all and uh, I put a rubber lining in it and basically reused it. It's it's made out of pipe, solid pipe. I'm just trying to basically reuse this one, one of the very first troughs I built. Um, and uh, this is the best one that has survived the Dunbar uh, toy. Luckily, none of them have flipped it. So that's, fingers crossed, that that continues. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take Dunbar's old toy, his old trough, a lot of you guys maybe have seen before. Um, we're gonna take it out to Big Joe. Let's go.
So this is basically uh, Promethean and water. And I put a little bit of diesel in it. I know some of you are probably questioning why we put diesel in it, but diesel actually is a, uh, a flower repellent. It helps with it. And so most of this is, uh, it's like four fluid ounces of Promethean that you can buy at a local feed store or tractor supply. And uh, the rest is water. And I'll just mix it in these because they can shoot the furthest. Maybe I need to try a water gun. Some people have told me to do that, so. This is about the only direct way of doing it. We uh, also put out garlic minerals sometimes uh, that Redmond makes uh, to keep the flies away when they ingest it. Uh, garlic is supposed to keep them away. I'm out of garlic right now, but uh, we just put some Bison 90 out uh, for them just to give them some good minerals to have and we do that year round as we like to put out our redmond minerals year round for that and in the summer we'll typically put out some garlic if we have it but let me see if we can see it closer to you you rattle that sack yeah that usually works On to you. Yeah, they are for sure. Got him a little bit. You did. All right, so Cole and I just came through. Uh, this is what I call the halfway nine acres. We just got this pond cleaned out in this area and this nine acre lot. But what's exciting about this is something I kind of discovered here recently. Uh, I guess I just wasn't paying attention to some of our boundaries because this is an odd shaped land that, that we have. But here is a, is a far west side of my neighbor's uh, 40 acres. And you can see it's all woods right here. But he got his land surveyed, which helped us when we built this new fence. And uh, so right here is a marker uh, where it basically, my get out of the way, is where uh, a Oklahoma state or an Oklahoma surveyor came, a certified surveyor came and drove a stake right here in the ground. So what I've kind of discovered is we've got, oh, I don't know, four more feet of width here of our land so i had uh bryce on the bulldozer push a bunch of this stuff out because this is where our next fence will go which means we can eventually get the big joe herd in this nine acres where we just cleaned out this pond once we get whole oh, i don't know 600 or or so feet of new fence done and then we can bring the yearlings in where the big joe herd is in this 40 acres just because there's 22 yearlings that can go in here and then big joe and them there's only nine of them they can go in nine acres for a little while plus there's a lot of good native grass in here but here's the cool part so this is where a future fence will go is basically off of this marker since we gained four or five feet we can build a fence straight through here now and it will run south and what we're going to do is because that's not a very good fence that's it's not in very good shape. We're not even gonna mess with that fence. That's our neighbors, basically. We can build a new fence through here off of this marker and go straight south. So we don't even have to tear that down. We're not even gonna mess with it. And uh, we can build a new fence right here. But here's the cool part. We can walk down here and take a look at this. Uh, there's a creek, uh, which is runs. This is the beginning of our access to this creek. I don't know the name of it yet. I've got I've asked some people and done some research on it, but this creek runs year around. And I think there's water dumped off into it at some point. I've heard that this creek is a part of a treatment plant. Um, and there's a place where uh, that 
water that's been recycled and, and purified or cleaned is dumped off in this creek. Where that happens, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. But it's very clean uh, water and it, it runs year round. You actually can see the levels go up and down pretty frequently. So, but here is the cool part to this is this is basically, like I said, the beginning of where we have access to this creek. Maya likes it. Yeah. Maya loves it. Oh, yeah. So, we've got obviously a tough part when you build new fences and you have a creek. A creek is absolutely an awesome part of having land, of course. But, the bad part is, is you got to make a good crossing because if you have some uh, floods and stuff like that, obviously when the water gets up, it can wash a lot of your fencing away. So when it comes to fence crossings over a creek, some sort of water, it gets really interesting and can be very difficult. So Looks like you got a little good example of it right here. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> the neighbor's fence. Neighbor's fence is uh, not gonna work. And we already had this issue whenever we first got the property. You can go back and watch some videos of me rounding up some cows twice because I finally found their um, entry into our property. And so we've already dealt with some creek crossings with fences before. So hopefully we'll have Richard help us on this because he, he knows what he's doing on fencing and stuff. We can figure out a plan how to cross this creek the correct way and um, do some things to try to avoid the floods from washing the fencing away. But I think it's really pretty down here though. Skinny healer. A wet skinny healer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we'll do is uh, we'll build that fence across there. You see, see that lane up mm -hmm. there? Yeah. So you can get access to it on the other side. When we drive around the ATV, you can. Pretty salty. Is it garlicky? This one's not. <laughs> I may not could have eat it. It's pretty strong. <laughs> Top of a margarita. <laughs> I think these animals look pretty pretty good right now. Because we had a drought and uh, we're still in it, we haven't we did have had, had some rain and it's helped a bunch as you can tell it's green here now, but we're still way behind on rain, but uh, because of the drought, we've had to put out some hay, but I've also uh, been putting out our, our four-way blend for them at a, in our Oklahoma Pride feeder. And because of that, they've been able to gain weight, keep on the pounds, and uh, they look really fleshy, is what I like to kind of say, but they just look really healthy and pretty. And, uh, Coats look amazing. Yeah, their hair looks good, and and feed feed helps. You know, when you don't have hundreds or thousands of acres for these animals to roam, if, if we had that much grassland, they wouldn't be on feed. Maybe when they were weaning calves, just because you brought them up and have to pin them away from moms, we would feed them. But other than that, if you've got thousands of acres, they can they can roam and and you know 
they live off of grass, which is what they've done for hundreds of years. And we would love to do that, but right now we can't do that. And we don't have hundreds or thousands of acres for them to roam on native grassland. So we do what we have to do to kind of keep them growing because these are just yearlings. And, uh, you know, this is our foundation herd. Is these animals right here from South Dakota and from Canada. And so we put a lot of effort into making sure that they grow to their full potential and that they're the healthiest. And plus the other reason why we were feeding them so much this summer, I say so much, it's free choice feed so they can come and get what they want. But one of the reasons that we were doing it this summer too was because we wanted them to feel full. Of course we lost a yearling out of this group and um, we didn't want them to be hungry because when they were hungry that means they were going to go possibly eat some plants that they normally wouldn't eat which was going to raise the chances of getting some of those toxic plants which was johnson grass i think in this case that killed our yearling out of this group so that's another reason why i've had feed on them this summer and hay um, is because of that to kind of keep them full so they weren't going out and searching for new grass because they were starving um, and raise those chances of them getting toxicity and nitrates or the prusic acid so here's one right here Yeah, he's got them bad. Something about bulls. I don't... The bulls, like Dunbar and Big Joe always have... They always have the most flies. And I... I guess it's just the hormones or something that they put out. I don't know what it is. But the bulls always have the worst flies. And so they get those scabs. See, they don't have very many on them. Mm -mm. Like he does. Right. I don't know what it is. Here he comes again. He may give me a shot on this side. Let's see if it works. Should help some. Here he is again. I'll try to get him again. If he'll let me. <laughs> In the winter, the flies will, will be gone, so their hides will heal a lot better. But right now, they got the flies on them and then they'll go and rub on these trees to scratch and when they scratch that's where they open those scabs and so they just keep doing the same thing and then the flies get back on so they have a hard time healing right now in the summer but in the winter that will heal over and their hide will thicken up and um, it'll be back to normal after that I made him mad She's not afraid of a whole lot. Sophie? Yeah.
All right, so you can see here we got a, a couple of big, big um, donations is what this is. So uh, if you guys know what I probably got these for, um, well, there is a gentleman at Davis Automotive here locally, not very far from us in Davis, Oklahoma, a guy named Dustin, a follower of the channel, had seen or got uh, caught wind of how we use these tire waters at Mom and Kevin's place with the Dunbar herd and how we installed three of those. Well, those three tires are nothing compared to these size here. So he saw that we were using the tire waters and he gave me a call and said, I got two big tires for you. And so Cole and I went and picked them up today, as you could tell, and then got them unloaded here. And uh, these are twice as big as the biggest one I have at Mom and Kevin's. Um, and uh, these are going to make great tire waters. And uh, you can go back and watch that footage of kind of a, I got four or five videos series of us installing the water system and, and just from the beginning of cutting the tires out and stuff so because of the ponderosa herds are a little bit bigger and uh, we'll be able to expand more here at the ponderosa these will actually become very handy because they are bigger and more of a surface area they can hold more water so we've got some work to do on them obviously it, it it's a lot of work to install a new water system but uh, we're not in a hurry or to do any of that right now but for the future we will be installing these bad boys and uh, they're gonna make a huge difference a couple of things i like about them is one they're they're very durable they last for a long time and they were super heavy on my trailer and luckily the skid steer is strong enough to get them but besides them being very durable and they last a long time in the winter time they tend to not freeze up near as much as any type of other water system you have or like a pond because uh, the, the sun will heat the rubber and the rubber keeps that water temperature from freezing and uh, Even during some of the strongest Temperatures we've had in, in uh, like a hundred years in our area in Oklahoma There was just a small uh, film of ice in the top of these tire waters at mom and Kevin's but these are huge tires and You know he I think he used this one for like a, a decoration or something um, for Christmas time or, or Halloween or something that's why it's painted but this is a I, I don't even know what size of tire this is it's just a big tire and um, we'll cut the rim out of it and we'll have to do some work on, on where we're gonna put them and all that but that'll come later on so just wanted to share with you somebody happened to watch your channel and saw what we were doing and uh, offered to give these to us so we appreciate Dustin at Davis Automotive here um, locally out of Davis Oklahoma if you guys ever want to watch how we installed these and the prepping and, and all the work that went into it at Mom and Kevin's, you guys can go watch the full videos here on our main channel. If you want to go back and watch kind of the quick versions of it, you can go watch it at our Clips channel. Also, don't forget, we still have a jerky and sticks as well, and you can check that out at crosstimbers.bison.com. Hey, thank you guys for watching our channel. Thank you for your support, and uh, we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.